Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the ninth video of the e-commerce with Golang project pack and series. In the previous video, the eighth video, we spent quite some time in building the add to cart function, but that's going to benefit us quite a bit right now. That's why I spent a lot of time there so that you could understand the entire structure because the remove item function and the instant buy function are going to be very similar in structure, right? As in so similar that we're almost going to copy and paste a lot of stuff from the from those functions. All right, so let's, uh, <clears throat> start with the remove item function right now the most important thing you have to uh, understand is that it's again it's not a regular function none of these are a regular function they're all stuck methods so you have to say app and uh, application okay and here because they're returning a gen dot handler function uh, that means that this returns a function which takes in c which is gen dot context and here's the uh, you have to do a lot of similar things as in you want to check for product ID you want to check for user ID uh, you want to check if the product ID is uh, you know compatible then you want to uh, handle this error then you want the context as well and then you want to also defer uh, cancel so let me select it till here and copy and paste it here completely now with copy uh, copy and pasting I don't really recommend copy and pasting a lot the reason is that the one issue that you made in one place, you're going to copy and paste it everywhere in your code and then you're going to have such a difficult time in solving those errors, right? So uh, even though, uh, you know, we can be very, very experienced as developers and we have like very great attention detail, but still, even after coding for 12 to 15 years, people do miss out things and they end up copying and pasting all the wrong stuff in their code and then it leads to big problems in their code. So I don't recommend copying and pasting. I don't do that a lot. And I'm doing it here just to save time in the video. Uh, but I, I know that we may be opening our, us uh, ourselves to a lot of errors here, but it's okay. We'll, uh, Golang is very, very forgiving language and it'll help us solve all the errors. But with other languages, uh, with like with JavaScript, it's not uh, that straightforward, right? I've spent hours, days uh, fixing errors with JavaScript. With Golang, it'll tell you exactly what the issue is. So you don't have to worry too much. That's why, uh, you know, I will copy and paste right now, but I, I don't recommend doing it a lot, right? It's especially when you, uh, if in your job, you have to work on a production level application, do it, do it. You might, uh, you know, face a lot of consequences. Anyhow, so now comes the time of the uh, calling the database function. So, <clears throat> When we say database, database basically means the package database and the function that we'll be calling will exist in our cart.go file, which will be remove cart item. And because it belongs to the package database, that's why we can access this function very easily, remove cart item. And that's the function that we're going to call out here. So we'll say remove cart item and uh, you want to pass context here, obviously. You want to pass app dot uh, prod product collection. So we'll say prod collection you'll say app dot user collection you'll say product id comma user query id just these th three things right and just as you had done in the function that we built in the last video which was add to cart now i want to capture that in i want to capture there's an error emanating from this i want to capture it here in the error variable and i want to uh, then handle that error so if error not equal to nil i want to say c dot n dented json http dot status internal server error from error and you want to return at the same time if everything goes well you want to say indented json and you want to say 200 which is everything is fine so successfully removed item from cart cool so this function is done right so because we spent so much time learning about the last function in the last video uh, it was so easy for us to just copy and paste things and build this function right so i like you know no time spent here is wasted because you gain quite a bit now similarly with the instant buy function I will be needing, uh, first let me set up the basics, which is uh, making sure that this is a struct method and not a regular function. So I've done that. Then uh, returning the function from here. So return func c 
question dot context and now i can copy paste quite a bit right from there so i'll need everything from here to here i'll need all of that so i'll copy and paste as it is and now after we have done all this we want to call database dot instant fire function so when you're writing this right uh, i don't know why that yeah so instant buy function so you have your card.go, you have your instant buyer function. Make sure this matches. Should have instant buyer or buy. Anyhow, I've kept the distinction so that you know I can be sure I'm not calling a wrong function. And here you'll have your prod collection, comma, app dot user collection. U will be small. And just make sure u is small everywhere. No, it's not small everywhere. So u needs to be small here as well. And u is small there. So that's perfectly fine. So you have user collection, comma, product ID, comma, user query ID. You want to now handle this error. So if error is not equal to nil, c dot indented json h dp dot status internal server error comma error but if everything went well you want to say c dot indented json 200 comma successfully is the order awesome so imagine in just about no time you were able to complete these two functions. Now we'll work on the buy from cart function, right? That's slightly smaller and then get item from cart is quite a long function. So we'll have to work on it in the next video. Okay. So let's work on our buy from cart function. And here you again know this is a uh, struct method. So it returns a function which is basically returning the gen dot handler func takes in gen dot context and to buy from cart you obviously need that users id which will be equal to c dot query and id and we'll say if user query id is empty so always when, when you're um, you know getting the id in a variable you always want to check if it's empty or not if the user by mistake sent an empty id and you want to panic that user id is empty and you want to abort also with error you want to abort the function with error you want to say http dot status bad request comma errors dot new and user id is empty awesome now uh, <clears throat> you want to set context because at the end obviously of this function we want to call a database level function and the database level function that we'll be calling from here will be this buy item from cart so to do that we obviously need the context let's set our context and we'll say context dot with time out context dot background comma 100 multiply by time dot second and we'll make it equal to where cdx on cancel cancel and here you'll say database by item from cart context from app dot uh, user collection comma user query id right that's basically the function that we're calling from the database package and you want to 
handle the error. You want to capture the error if it comes from this function, and then you want to handle it. So you say if error is not equal to nil, see that indented JSON dot status it turns out error, comma error. And but if everything goes well, when I say C dot indented JSON successfully placed the order. Makes sense. So for both our buy from card and instant buy, uh, we were able to complete the entire functions quickly and also for our remove item. So I hope you've learned quite a bit in this video. We've achieved quite a bit in this video and uh, do subscribe to this channel so that you come to know when the next video of the series comes out, which will be tomorrow or day after tomorrow, something like that. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.